Hello again, welcome back everyone, Liquorhound here with you, and thank you for joining me once again for another spirit review video. And today we're going to be taking a look at the Smokehead Single Malt Isla Whiskey, the Sherry Bomb Edition. Now the Sherry Bomb Edition is a limited release. It was released around late 2018, most likely we saw it on shelves in 2019. But of course here in Texas we always get things pretty slow. So it kind of rolled out mid-2019, but I still see bottles of this on the shelf. So I wanted to go ahead and do this review. That way you can hopefully get out there and find you a bottle if these tasting notes sound interesting to you. Now this Sherry Bomb version was bottled at 48% ABV. They do a standard Smokehead, which is a 43% Isla uh, single malt. That one retails at around $45. This Sherry Bomb is about $70, $75. Now they also do a Smokehead High Voltage, that's the cast strength version, and that one is 58% ABV, and that one retails about the same price as this one, about $75. Now, let's go ahead and get to the nosing and tasting and see what we think about this one. It is a single malt, so we know it is coming from just one distillery. Mm, nice. So on the nose, it does give you that kind of, to me, I always think when I start getting this plumminess and this kind of meaty smoke, it reminds me of like a Korean barbecue. So this one does have a little bit of that going on in it. There's a nice big, fairly big little fruit presence to it. It's got a little bit of a lemon zest. There's a, besides the plumminess, there's also kind of like a little bit of raspberry mixed in with that. A little vanilla tone, a little sweet, that kind of American oak, giving it that vanilla sweetness. There is a little bit of a good balance of spice. I would say the spice is kind of unique. Cinnamon, maybe a hint of anise, and a little bit of a, just a little touch of cardamom. Kind of unique that uh, in that note being in here. Okay, nice. It does also have that little nice briny note, that little, you just kind of smell that little sea salt air. This one definitely has that. The dried fruits are in here, but they're not big and in, in, in your face. There's a little bit of that kind of like sweet fig, a little that uh, date characteristic going on. Really nice, okay. Now, let's go ahead and give it a taste, see what we think. Wow. Okay. That's a really nice ABV for this one. 48%. Feels like it's giving me enough viscosity. Feels like it's giving me just enough intensity without going over the top. It doesn't make me feel like it needs water. But of course, we never gauge the first sip, so here we go with the second. Mm -hmm. Really like the way the, the sherry notes are uh, well integrated into the whiskey. And they're not dominant, they're not heavy on the really dark fruit characteristics like the prune or the raisin. This one actually is very um, berry forward which is surprising that raspberry tone coming through maybe even a little hint of strawberries in with it that plumminess is in there with those two berries of course imagine them kind of cooked down just a little bit the smoke does have a really nice clean peat to it so think more of a meatiness um, you know a clean smoke it doesn't have that uh, creosote or that tar or any kind of um, chemical plasticky thing that can occasionally come up. This one doesn't have any of that. Viscosity seemed like it was about medium. Let's double check. Mm -hmm. Medium, just above medium viscosity. Again, feels fairly creamy. Enters really kind of soft. Yeah, it's how it feels on the palate. It feels like it enters nice and soft. You start focusing on those fruits, the vanilla tone running underneath, that brine almost has like a, 
I don't want to call it vegetal, but I guess you would call it something like a seaweed tone um, to it as well. And then on the mid palate, once the, the spice kind of gives a little warmth, and on the mid palate as it starts rolling over, you can almost start to find a little bit of a, a nuttiness in there as well. It's adding just a hint of bitterness. I would almost call it a walnut characteristic as it starts fading into the back end. And on the back end, of course, you get that nice meaty smoke. You're also getting a little touch of dark chocolate. And you can still chew on all those uh, kind of light fruit characteristics that were up front are now starting to fade in with that nice smoke on the back end. That little citrus lemon peel essence that I was picking up on the nose is in on the palate as well with that vanilla kind of running underneath everything. The smoke is lingering. The slight fruit characteristics lingering. Brine still there with it. It does give you a little bit of that smoked fish characteristic, but it's way back in the back end for me. A little more research. Let's see. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Mm. I was chewing on in this one a little bit more. Yeah, you pick up the citrus right up front as well. As far as distillery characteristic, it feels like it's an Ardbeg to me. So if you enjoy Ardbeg, um, it's not nearly as big as some of the old Ooga dolls, um, but it almost feels like a, a more restrained, more kind of refined Ooga doll, if that makes sense. Because Ooga doll's kind of, you know, it can be kind of brash and really flavorful. This one feels like it's watered down, because I think it'll use at 55. So this one's watered down to about 48. But to me, that's a really good spot. This is very drinkable. It does not feel like it needs water. Retail pricing on this one, again, is about $70, $75. I think that's a good spot for it. I don't have a problem with that price. So I think if you enjoy Ardbeg, if you like those peaty, uh, smoky whiskeys, this is going to be something to keep an eye out for. Um, again, I'm still seeing it on shelves. So hopefully you can find one. Um, now, this is going to be uh, one of the new videos I'm starting to do. You know, last year, 2019, um, there was a lot of things going on with my career kickstarting. I'm doing this new Stains Alley project. But now here we are in 2021. That's starting to really take off. So uh, due to time constraints, I'm starting to kind of focus a little more on using my YouTube channel as my, um, I don't know how to call this. I'm using my Patreon channel as a launch platform for my YouTube channel. That's a better way of saying it. So this video initially is going to go up on my Patreon uh, channel. That's uh, patreon.com slash liquorhound. And then about a couple weeks later, I'm going to launch it onto, uh, upload it onto my YouTube channel. And we're going to keep moving forward from there. Every two weeks, I'm going to try and do a new video on YouTube. Of course, you're going to get a two-week head start on Patreon. So if you feel like joining us over there and helping support my independence in buying these bottles, uh, would be greatly appreciated. If not, no worries. Again, you're going to see these videos. They're just going to be two weeks later. Uh, but also, I still have my library on Patreon. There's like probably 60-something videos on there. That's another added benefit of going over there. But much appreciation to each and every one of you out there for always being there for me. And I look forward to you trying out my new expression of Saints Alley spirits coming out in 2021. Until then, everyone have a great day and cheers.